Oh, oh, what's going on, everybody? It's FRL. Oh, I'm Christian God. Piles. It's happening right now. It's Jordan Oliver. He's on the mat, and we are watching. They, he they, just they got, got taken down. down. They're not takedown. That wasn't a takedown, Christian. Okay, well, That's they called it. Takedown. So as we uh, did the intro, we missed the takedown. But um, if you don't know, Jordan Oliver is wrestling to qualify the United States for 65 kilograms. There you can see it on your mat. He's down 2-1. Ogan Sanyan. Uh, which is probably not how you say it. We're just saying it like the army wrestler. But um, uh, has a takedown. Jo's going to need two more points. He has two minutes to get them. So, uh, but uh, ben no, does that not edge agree sequence. With the takedown. No, the edge sequence. Uh, it was for headlock, and uh, Ogan Sanyan tried jumping over. Ended up with a single leg. It was definitely not a takedown. <clears throat> and the, you know the edge takedowns are bullcrap in UWW. So they gave him two. But it definitely wasn't. So I, to catch you guys up, too, uh, for our listeners who don't pay attention and rely on us for news, Beg Bulatov missed weight. Yes. Which you guys informed me of. Missed weight. Uh, and everyone knew he was super big for the weight, but he made it a month or so ago and was rolling yeah. and then got pinned in, like, the semis or wherever it was at um, the qualifier before that. So And then oh, J.O. Man. was set to have him in the second round. Instead, um, that's not the case. And the Geo's, Park guy was tough, though. Yeah, uh, both those guys were Green reasonably guy. tough. The Bulgarian was no oh. slouch. Um, so Jo's going on the clock. Jo's on the clock, so he's going to be down by another. He, point need, he needs score. to get a takedown. He's got, there's a, a minute, minute to go. Oh. He's got a minute left. He's down by one. Um, and it's could be one more. It's Oganessian that is per, in pursuit. Jail, they're not really pressing for the score here. Mm. The, then again, he needs three. He needs it's a takedown. Take, yeah, takedown. Come on, get. Ooh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Go. He beat the buzzer also, I'm pretty sure. No, that one. Don't, yeah, they no, gave. Doesn't matter. He's board. still winning with 30 seconds to go. Big double, picks his spot, and gets it. He's up 3 3 on criteria with 25 seconds to go. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Oh, this shit. is so insane. Uh -oh. This is so insane. 3-3. Three, three, 20 to go now. J.O. in the lead. Come on. 16. They're in the center. Clearing ties. Snapping off his Oganesi in 12 Stay seconds. J.O.'s right in the middle of the mat. Level changing. Keeping him at bay. 7 Stay seconds now. Hanging okay, tough as J.O. circling in. Oh, now he does. J.O. does it. He wins 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, oh baby. One more match. One oh, more match. my gosh. He's a match away. He's going to have Magomed Marin, Gadzaev of Poland, who's really Russian, in the semis for the spot. 3-3. <laughs> three, three. Oh, a little bit of stress. They've. Uh, I mean, his last match was just as stressful. Uh, maybe. 5-4. I mean, it was It was. Um, the, the South Korean took two shots and finished them both. And it, it was it was really dicey, um, but um, oh, J so Jo moves on. It's not easy, and th this level is so insane. I mean, you just you just watch how good Jordan Oliver is. He just won a bracket of, of guys that are all household names, and you've seen the things he's done domestically. Then you get here, and round one is not easy, and round two is a is a nightmare. And your quarter, you're digging deep, and these are not these are not like world medalists either. These are not guys with like the most sterling senior level reputations, yet they're just, they're they're all, all so good. And um, man, so excited to see Jordan one step away. Now we gotta check the, uh, what the, what the. Who won the other? Well, no, it's get, it's get, we know his match. We gotta see how long before he's up again. Um, Can't be very long. Not years. long at all. He's yeah. upcoming on B, he is four matches on B. So Gadzaya finished probably a half hour ago, maybe more. And Why was his so far ahead? It just happens like, you know how it is. Yeah, he wrestled well, before 7.30. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, set, yeah, 7.20. Really? Yes. Yeah. So he'd been off an hour, actually. It was, it was the one you guys were complaining about, the really slow one? Oh, uh, well, Gadziev had uh, Lomtazi, who Lomtazi replaced Kinchukishvili, who tested positive for COVID. And Gadziev literally, I don't think he took a shot. He just literally stood in the middle, hand fought the entire time. He somehow got uh, Lamtazi put on the clock twice, and that's okay. how how he lost. 
Um, so, also, also, Dave Habit is has to beat Greece to qualify for the Olympics. Oh, on the top side. On the top side. Top side was um, significantly weaker, uh, so we could have uh, America versus uh, America in the finals, except Slovenia. So the, bra the brackets not updates. So you're saying Habit already beat um, the French guy? Yes. Hey, how in the hell did the Turkey guy get the number one seed? That seemed pretty weird. Well, he's pretty good. Mm. He had that. Um, Colin Real Budo won his first match in that bracket. You FYI. love Colin Real Budo. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I, listen, I do like the Real Budo family. Evidently. So, I okay. don't know. It looks like they're maybe taking a break on. So, it's all on Matt B now. But it's at 11. Semis are at 11. Oh. Central time. Okay. Noon so Eastern, yeah. Oh. Okay. So we got time. So, so we, we got relax. So J O semis are actually have, like he the can finals. have a Gatorade. Yeah, right. I wonder if that's why they're doing it like that, knowing that it's going to be. I mean, that's that's a lot more fair because yeah. if Jordan was up, I mean, uh, Gadzive would have an extra hour of wait time compared to J O, who uh, probably have like a half hour. So that's great. So yeah. they're done till eleven. J O's in. Um, no one's actually going to watch. No one's actually going to wrestle in the finals, correct? Because the top two qualify and there's no wrestle back. I don't. Uh, I don't think we're going to see a lot, and I don't think they're anticipating many. Um, I mean, because you would also have to make weight. Oh, because they're tomorrow. Yeah. So what's your now? Yeah. You know who needs to wrestle back are all there the bronze. A, yeah, there is repetage. There, you need to wrestle. Why would back there be repetage if there's no two second? But there's no the third place. Because you need to. I mean, think about it. It happens oh, all the time. Oh, someone, if someone fails a doping test of some sort. Doping test. There's a, there's myriad things. A guy pulls out for injury yeah. or, you know, the, things can happen. So you got to, uh, yeah, you need to wrestle back bronze. That's what got Frank in in 16. Yeah, 16. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. So. Uh, Mitch Feinsilver at 74. He just needs to win one more match, and he's in the he's in the Olympics. That's crazy. Yeah, 74. Who's he got? Right. Um, so he beat Korea. He beat um, Dominican Republic, I guess, and then he beat Greece three in a row. Man, murderous row. Uh, 74. <laughs> uh, who's the other one? So, oh my gosh. So the Sal Kazanov, the Slovakian, who was on fire a couple weeks ago, is in the semis against the Belarusian Kadi Magomedov, who beat Demirtas, just must have just beaten Demirtas, who just beat Sabalov. So 74 was a yeah, pretty... That's a bracket. That's a really bonkers bracket. Man, a guy like Sabalov not qualifying is just like... That's Sab crazy. Sabalov is the one that you spelled with a T-S at the beginning, correct? Yes. But now it's but they the, change it to a C here? Yes. Okay. For whatever reason. Hmm. Uh, what other notable things have happened here? Um, in, anything uh, of note? Amin, Amin did not make it out of the first round. Miles. Um, I'm sorry, not Miles. Malik. Malik. He lost to Tunisia, maybe? To UN? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that would be Tunisia. Right. Yeah, um, not, not a... But there's more... Inter I mean, I was, I was referring to more like internationally relevant wrestlers. Um... Oh, like 57. Oh, damn. Damn, that's a dagger. No, dagger. that's not a dagger. No, no, no. Come on. Don't you know what dagger. I mean? Dagger. Listen, Malik Amin is not an NCAA. I, I, I mean, what are we I talking know, about? I know what you mean, Christian. I'm just, just I'm just letting you know how you come off sometimes. Okay. That's all I'm saying. All right. Well, I meant like, okay, so for example, here's what I mean. I got you. We've got, I got this. I know, I know what you mean. Okay. We've got Takahashi versus Andreu is one of the semis. Mm, that is insane. That's a good one. Um, Edishrishvili versus Erdinabot is the other semi. Like 57, yeah, bananas, bananas. Makoa beat uh, Torblanca. That, that's a good one. So, so Torblanca's out. Dang. Makoa. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, I mean, this tournament is like totally insane with the, the how many quality wrestlers are there. Really, it kind of puts mm -hmm. the Olympics in... And more more perspective, just how good it is. And Russia is still trying to get their heavyweight qualified, which I did not remember they had not done. Um, he's got to be Hungary. He, yeah. What do you know about him, David? Do you know anything about uh, Kozryev? Let me see here. 
Um, sorry, I'm, I'm coordinating with Kozak about the recap, so I'm not paying attention. But, Got it. Uh, yeah. Just come okay. back to me later. All right. Hit pass. Mm. The, the pass. official answer is pass. Pass. Okay. Oh, that was a shot of adrenaline starting the show with the, uh, with the freaking... I was thinking this is going to be a terrible show if he loses if he because lo- yeah. we are just going to be in just, the worst mood ever. The whole time. He's so yeah. pissed and maybe yelling about the jerk Destra bats from Argentina and we'd just be, we'd just be so, so full of anger. But now it's okay um, for now. And then we can get all crazy at 11. Uh, okay. Hey, so I want to talk about... Th- Kyle, Kyle should talk about this because I didn't know about this till this morning, and it is a totally, totally crazy, uh, crazy story from India. And I want <laughs> Kyle's good at always telling these stories. All right, so Kyle. this morning I'm on Twitter checking in what everyone what happened last night, what everyone's saying, and I come across this story that's going across wrestling Twitter that um, two-time Olympic medalist Sushil Kumar from India. Um, is currently on the run and wanted for murder. What? <laughs> and uh, this guy is, uh, he's, he's a lightning rod. You know, he has controversy follow him in, in all things that he does. So apparently last night, him and another group of people got into a fight and um, a man named Sagar Kumar who is apparently a Greco-Roman junior national champion and part of the senior camp, senior level training camp in Greco-Roman in India, was was murdered and a, a number of people were injured in this in this fight. But um, oh my god! Apparently it was some pretty big brawl where this guy ended up dying, and it just so Jeez. happens that the guy uh, that died is the son of a Delhi police head constable. Which does not feel like a good idea, to, or yeah, it's not, yeah, that's not going to turn out good for our friend Sushil. He's no friend of mine. <laughs> I just want to create that distance mm. right now. Um, so it says that the guy that was was murdered uh, and his friends were staying in a house linked to Kumar near the the stadium where this murder took place, and had been asked to vacate recently. Police sources said, while providing details of the dispute that led to the killing. So it sounds like there might have been some dispute about uh, eviction, maybe. Mm. And uh, Mm. around 2 a.m. near this stadium, which is near where the house was, um, police got a call about a firing incident. The caller claimed he saw two men with pistols firing at each other. When police reached the spot, they found five cars in the parking area, but nobody inside. And then inside one of those cars, they found found a, uh, a gun. They arrested one guy. There's a few other guys in the hospital, but they're looking for Kumar. <laughs> this part of the story cracked me up, though. So this dude's on the run. The police can't find him. And it says, Sushil Kumar did not respond to calls and messages from the Indian Express seeking comments. Can't believe. The coward won't face the media. <laughs> so or the police officer. He's on the run, and they're like, you know what? We're just going to reach out to him. We're just going to try to get his side of the story. You know, Facebook Messenger, maybe, you know, call via that. No yeah. Deal. Listen, once a quad, Sushil Kumar does something audacious, okay? And it is escalating, all right? In what, 20... uh, what else has he done? I, I'm not aware of this. Okay. I, I didn't so know let's this start. Uh, Tyler, I sent, I put an Instagram video in, in the chat, okay? This is from 2012. Um, I want to play this. <laughs> so he just happens to place his mouth and teeth area over the ear of an opponent in an attempt to gut wrench him and it works in the olympic games he clearly oh, he bites and gut wrenches good tactic bites his ear it's the most obvious thing ever um so this is from the 2012 uh olympic games we can sh- that's fine like right there um so watch this uh little technique the there yeah here we go so right there Good little chomp. The guy's freaking out. He's like, oh my gosh, oh, yeah. he just chewed on my ear a little bit. I might use that one. That's not a bad tactic. I might try that. <laughs> so he gets up. His ear is like, there's pictures of it. His ear is Ooh, there. You know what's goes. good oh, here? Yeah. Oh, oh, he really bit it. I was going to say, you know what, with my, my cauliflower right. ear. So say if I bit my hand, you would see teeth marks. Thanks, Tyler. I, I think the cauliflower is so hard, I don't think you'd see teeth marks. I think you might be able to get away with it. Yeah, except when you look like that, when your mouth is completely over there, and then he, the guy comes up, and there's a bloody stump of an ear hole there. Why? That's why, how you're uh, going to know. Why didn't he get DQ'd? 
I'm not. I, I think they like. Eh. Jason Bright said in the chat, Kumar denied the bite, citing he was a vegetarian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you Stop. know what? Stop. That, Stop. That, that can't be real. Listen, if you're. <laughs> it's real. So, okay, then. So that was his 2012. Okay, next quad, he said, you know what? I'm going to up the stakes. He decided in 2016, he's like, I want to be on the Olympic team, but I don't want to actually have to like wrestle for the spot. I just kind of want it handed to me as sort of a legacy thing. And they had like a legit guy, um, uh, Ravi? No, no, not Ravi. Um, Yada. 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 So they had a legit guy who like had won the spot outright, but then he just like went through all these lengths to get wrestle offs oh, and all this stuff. I remember this. And then he poisoned Yadov. He arranged to get him poisoned so he would test positive and not be able to, to wrestle. And it basically listen, got... Hey, listen. Christian, that was the guy that I told you I wrestled I was so strong, so I'm kind of suspicious he might have been using the juice for real, though. Yadov, yeah, maybe so. Yadov, but... Yadov might have been using that real, the real steroids. So he, he pops and then is like, listen, I'm not taking anything. Something happened to my food. Someone got to my food. And uh, so then it comes out that they are actually arrested this younger wrestler that, that Kumar hired to poison this guy's food, and he admitted to it. He admitted so he was right. They poisoned his food. So he goes from biting to poisoning to drum roll, please, the murder of a constable's son. Which <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to make light of it, but the guy's been out of control, and he's escalating. And if we don't bring him to justice now. I don't want to see what he has planned for the 2024 Olympics. I'm sorry. It's time that Kumar goes away for a little bit and stops the escalation because what he's doing right now is not good. So this guy's a total maniac, clearly, and now he's uh, involved in what appears to be some level of organized crime. And you think, uh, yeah, you think they got uh, innocent until proven guilty in India or what? I am, you know what? I am not brushed up on my Indian legal. Um, yeah, me either. <laughs> you, you sound like you think he's just guilty. You're just accusing the man of being guilty right away without well, him giving him due process. I, listen, I, I don't know if you're aware. I can't actually charge him or convict him. I'm just calling it like I see it with no facts whatsoever. If, you, if you're poisoning people, if you're willing to poison someone, uh, it sounds like, you know, Maybe and it's I didn't well, say he's one you know, for he didn't poison. He just he made you guys you're making it sound like you try to kill him. Nice, no, he wanted to make a pop for steroids. That's not not that's not nearly that bad, Christian. Okay, well minimize it, Ben. Well, let's. I'm curious what lengths you would go to to win, Ben. What do you call it? You what, just what said you, you would. Be, you, this can't be poisoning though. It's got to be called something else. Poisoning. You want to maybe kill somebody? No, th there's different. Po not every poison really? is. I'm gonna look yeah. up the definition. Poison. Poison. Well, okay. yeah, poison ivy. Imagine. You give someone poison ivy. Are you trying to kill them? Mm, is that is that poisoning them? Well, I don't know. It's called poison ivy, so it feels like that would fall under the poison category. Uh, let's see. It says a substance that is capable of causing the illness or death of a living organism when introduced or oh. absorbed. Illness. Well, okay. no. Tampered, they, okay, here, here's here's another one. He poisoned. Here's another one for you, Christian. Admin well, administer poison either deliberately or accidentally. Meh. Yeah, I don't know. We have, to, we have to do a new term here when we try to make some more. Okay, you can pop soften pop. it up and PC up the terminology, um, Ben, if that's if that's what you want to do. I'm going to call it what it I is. Wanna, I want to make it correct. I want to make it correct. Well, I think I was correct. It was poisoning. He was poisoned. He bit? What do you say? He nibbled? Can we can we say he bit his ear, uh, nibbled, or was it? I definitely, uh, definitely bit his ear. He made him okay. bleed. Okay, all right. You're <laughs> not gonna try to. Was it, if it was soften that If it was one. just teeth marks, if it was just teeth marks, I'm cool. But he made him bleed. That's over the line, buddy. You ever bite someone in a match? Not in a match. Donnie Prinsloff bit me one time. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we had all kinds of battles. Uh, you know, in practice every once in a while, I might bite someone for pissing me off. Really? Yeah, Where you'd be on top while. and just like take a. I actually no. I actually got this move. When, when I got this move. Is this is actually not biting? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Get, you can use this, Christian. Okay, ready? Sick. So if someone's giving you extra hard cross faces, uh -huh. you have this sharp tooth right there, Alan. Yeah. It's really Canine. sharp. Yep. And so you know, I see, I know the cross face is coming again. I'm just gonna like put my lip in, stick my tooth out, and they jam their arm right in that hard tooth, and I, and I like kind of hunch down on it. Oh yeah, they don't <laughs> like that at all. They don't all like right. That. And yeah. you don't, is this why you don't like the cross face? So you don't like cross face. Did, um, 
as a, as no, a I, I love it because then, then they're crying because their arm hurts. Or if you you know you, you get mad on top and you can't get someone turnover, you could dig the canine into the top of their head. Boom, that'll cause a reaction right there. That is <laughs> <laughs> what is happening right now. <laughs> I'll teach you all the dirty tricks right now, Kyle. That's what I'm doing. Are these the links you went to at the Southeast Missouri State Open? I never get cheated in matches, only in, only in practice. No, it, ver, you, in matches you use verbal cues. You, you you talk trash to them, and then they get mad, and then okay. you know they do something stupid, and they get banned. Yeah. Have you ever done any sort of light poisoning of your opponents? In um, retrospect, no, do you I, wish you did some light poisoning? Oh, I got I got a good one. One time when I was six years old. Uh, my parents were building their house that we lived in, and um, I convinced Max that uh, you know the bulldozer has tracks, and I convinced him that it was a Hershey's bar, and he took a big bite of dirt. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you convinced Max to take a big bite of dirt. I think he was like four or three at the oh, time. Oh, okay, that's great, right? Yeah. How much older? I was, are you I was only six, six. Two years. <laughs> That's genius. Hey, speaking of, of dirty moves, we got another one that happened uh, last night. Um, watch this throw, uh -oh. and then watch the South Korean uh, wrestler's response here. This is at 97 this kilos. This is all alleged. No, this is not alleged. This is on video. Ooh, that's a big throw. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that, seems, that seems fair. I don't mind that. Why? Yeah. He kicked him I mean, right the in the chest. The, yeah, that doesn't hurt. Stop being a wimp. Go this back, through go back sign, to the beginning. He deserves tired. a little kick. No, he's in the trying to score this guy's, four. Like I his get feet it. Were I get still it. When he, you like, throw me on, you throw me onto a sign. I might kick you in the chest. The like, signs. Well, first of all, why move. do they have signs there? There shouldn't be signs there I don't because know. you can easily do continuation into him like that. That was clean. It wasn't like that was dirty. Uh, he ended up getting. He, that, got the, he got disqualified for the, the guy game. in blue. Was he's faking it? That did not hurt. Dude, oh, yeah, on, give me a you point. can't kick people in the <laughs> chest in a wrestling match. It did not hurt. He's being a baby. If that if that if that sequence happened in my practice, I'd yell at the blue guy for being a baby. Like you're being a baby. Get up. It didn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> my gosh, Ben. I mean, um, I agree. Hey, I agree. Uh, he was he was definitely like hamming it up, it, but so. you still can't do what he did. Oh, I did get poisoned with a pot brownie one time, uh, Christian. I, yeah. Brian, I'm, Brian said that in the chat. That's true. Who's Brian? Jason Bryant. Oh, Jason Brian. Bryant. Jason Bryant. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Bryant. Yeah, you were That's poisoned. You're set up. And yes, then the FBI was, was doing a surveillance on you. <laughs> they, they might have been. You never know. <laughs> yeah. um, hey, so can we make more rule changes? They they do. They, and that, just rules guys. that thing. Rules guys Should we back. legalize they kicking? They need you guys. <laughs> uh, possibly. They need to make some type of edge criteria where it's very set in stone because now you're seeing everyone freaking run people forever. And it's like slamming dudes on floors and stuff. And it's like, let's just like, maybe maybe something has to be in bounds. Maybe it's one step. I'm open to ideas, but we should not just have this open-ended. You can get four, 47 feet off the mat. I like, disagree. Cool. I kind of love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Stop, Kyle. When, when Kyle Dake ran David Taylor all the way into like the third mat at yeah, the he, world team trial. That was absurd. Minutes, that was so absurd. That was so absurd. They were like 37 feet off the mat. <laughs> that was so funny. That was gave, so, they gave that was so dumb. <laughs> and then Kyle, that, was, Kyle, that was so dumb. No, that was great. I kind of love it. <clears throat> it's, it's sort of, I think you can't have, to consistent officiating in tournaments when yes. the idea that you can run a guy from one mat to another mat and still get continuation points. You um, should not be able to get that. Because the other thing is, I mean, I, frankly, if I was running tournaments, it's a liability issue because every kid now knows they can just slam them as far as they want. Heck and yeah. there's open space <laughs> off of every mat. You only got to go a couple feet, right? Yeah. Why these matches have two or three feet on the edge. I'll go put them down in the hardwood. That's, yeah, that's put them answer. in the stands. Happen. Take it to the sand. Yeah, I mean, they might in... give you four for that. Possible. Yeah, put them in the trash can. See what kick, happens. Kick I don't them know. in the chest. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> put those uh, size 10 Adidas is right in there. So, yeah, here we go. Here's some good continuation <laughs> oh, wrestling. Oh, this is a right really here. Good one. Oh, Boom. <laughs> I think, that's honestly, four. that should be four. The meter because exposed. If that wall was not there, that's four. Check it out. Watch that's the meter exposes wow. here. That's what Eric Hinkley oh, said about his. One more time. Here we go. Watch this. Watch me to line. Oh, Boom. That broke oh. 90. It literally <laughs> broke 90. 
Who was uh, it that uh, took out the score clock this weekend? We got another one to add Schaefer. to the collection. It was, it was the 97 match. Yeah. Austin Schaefer, he, he took out the scoreboard, about tried to kill some table workers because oh then gosh. the scoreboard came down on the table workers. Okay, so what what do you let's make a rule? What do you guys want the rule to be? But we, we let's just decide it here. Uh, if foot, something in bounds, maybe one step, what do you want it to be? Man, it's tough to put a mm, like an amount of It needs well, to yeah, be no, Okay, make, how about this? It has to be on real. Here, I'm making the rule. It has on, to be on the sir, Oh, I like this. On the square. You have to finish it on yeah, the square. Oh. Okay. Ooh. I like that. <laughs> you should only get points if you finish off the mat. <laughs> oh god. I want to I want to encourage encourage you like when when hey Niley was just throwing Anthony Valencia all over the place. That was so that was so ridiculous. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It's ridiculous. It's shenanigans. But I understand why they're doing it cuz the referees let them do it, but it's nonsense. Yeah. Uh, so let's say finish it on the square, take it to the sand. I like it. I like it, CP. Finish it somewhere on the playing surface. You get points. Off the playing surface, no points. We all have a clear understanding of what we're doing here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like it. That makes sense. Um, right, hey, we got hey. some HD footage here. Let's check out some, uh, some oh, more geez. What off the mat destruction. Schaefer. Oh my God! <laughs> Come on, they, yeah, someone could have died. Bader, look at you got Bader over there. Thankfully, Bader's a world class athlete catching that scoreboard. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Super He's the silliest wrestler oh, yeah. yeah, Did they not? Did they not? Did they, what are you saying? We're just vibing. We're just vibing. <laughs> We're just vibing? What does that even mean? Who is he wrestling? I think Roder. Nate Roder, dude. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The Eric Hinkley destroyer, Nate Roder. Hey, shut your mouth. Hey, I don't know what your deal yeah. is. He did that's it, not, not good, me. That's not a good scenario to have scoreboards being destroyed and everything. Um, hey, you know something we didn't talk about yesterday? Nate Jackson. Uh, dude, this dude has gotten so much better. I mean, he just won the, the U.S. Open in a, in a decent bracket. Kyvin, he beat Kyvin Gadsden in the finals. Um, I, I think, man, that just speaks to we saw how com, how much he competed. Uh, you know, he was uh, the Corona guy, just wrestling every single weekend. Yeah, He got so much better. I mean, you think about that his best was best finish at NCAAs was fifth or seventh or something. Mm -hmm. And now he's winning U.S. Open up. I mean, that's and that's 28 pounds above where he wrestled in college. Yeah. Yeah. Uh you know he's he's for sure on that short list to make the team at 92. Now we're we're trying to figure out who's going to come down in light of uh, or up Kyle. in this situation. Kyle, yeah, what do you mean? Oh, with in light of oh, Kyle. Well, if, Kyle, if Kyle, if Kyle medals, then right. obviously he's the guy. Then no one can wrestle that weight class at the wrestle offs. Gotcha. Um. Okay. 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 Um. Yes. Well, you don't have a lot on your list to talk about today, Christian. We've got a well, lot of topics. Well, I, yes. We, we've got, oh, Bray, talk a little uh, bit about preps. What was going on there? Yeah. So, national preps went down Sunday and Monday. Um, a little bit of a different format this year. It was an open tournament. So, normally, national preps, a lot of buildup happens in February, but this year, COVID caused a whole bunch of problems. And so, they, so they did it. Um, just just this last weekend, uh, there were few, few people missing because of juniors and, and a couple other things going on. So it wasn't a complete like full field, but still some really, really good wrestling. Malvern Prep just balled out. They had six in the finals and they went six for six, which, Damn. yeah, totally crazy. Um, so their six champs were Jack and Siglio at 106. Um, he's around top 10 in the country at that weight. Spencer Barnhart, he's ranked. He won it at 126. And then they have just a murderer's row up top. They won every weight from 182 through heavyweight. Um, Jack Waymeyer, he he's a guy who last year finished sixth at preps, and he's just like gone on a tear since then. He's he's wrestled really really well, uh, all the way up to number two in the country. Um, and he was in probably the toughest bracket of of any of them at 182. He beat T.J. Stewart in the finals in an overtime match. Uh, so good win for him keeps his hot streak going. He's I like maybe one of the most improved 
wrestlers in all of, of high school wrestling this year, as is TJ Stewart, who he beat in the finals. Um, Caden Rogers won it at 195, and, and he had a, a ranked opponent in the finals as well. Uh, Nick Feldman won it at 220. He just continues to kill every, everybody in his path. And then uh, Colton Deary won at heavyweight, and he had to pull an upset over Kaminsky in the in the finals. <clears throat> Super weird match at, at heavyweight. Um, there was like a an injury, like getting reset on top in overtime, but uh, Deary got the win. And uh, so yeah, six for six in in prep finals for Malvern was was amazing. Uh, some of the really good guys in action. Shane Van Ness won it at 138. I was a little bit surprised to see him go back to 138, but uh, but that's where he was. He won it there. Um, yeah, because someone's else? at 150, 157. Yeah, 138, 157 ain't that close together. Yeah, I think that that prediction is looking less and less likely right now. At least yeah. right now, I, I still think he could be a 157 eventually, but I don't think it'll be next year. Um, who else? Oh, Gabe Arnold. He took a couple losses at Cadets, but he bounced back. He he won uh, a tough bracket at 170 also. Um, so, yeah, some really good stuff going on. Uh, and despite COVID, I mean, they, you know, they had that tournament. A lot of really good wrestling, and Malvern Prep really, like, stole the show. How does the – what's the long-term prep outlook look like for, you know, because it's, it's Blair, it's Malvern Prep, Sam, et cetera. Yeah. How does it look? I mean, Malvern's going to have, I think, so of those champs, at least five. They're going to have all six of those back, I believe. Um, yeah, Consiglio uh, is just a freshman. Um, Barnhart's a sophomore. Uh, Waymeyer's a junior. Um, let's see, who else? Oh, Caden Rogers is a junior. Yeah, Deary and Feldman both juniors. So all of those those champs are going to be back next year. Um, the tournament will get tougher. Get more guys, you know, you got to you got to figure Blair's lineup probably looks a little different next year. They they were one team that didn't have everybody in action. You know, Mark Anthony McGowan wasn't wrestling, uh, and then and then some of the guys that probably would have gone there this year didn't because of COVID. Um, Chittum, you know, moved back to, to Tennessee, wrestled from there. Uh, Ryland Rogers was wrestling in Idaho. So players lineup will, I think, look quite a bit different next year um, and, and will probably be stronger. Wyoming Sam is going to be super tough again. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be competitive moving forward, but I don't think this is like a fluke for Malvern Prep. I mean, they're going to be in the running. They would have been in the running if everybody would have been there, including the guys that didn't even – choose to, to wrestle in the, the prep season this year um, or, or stay at Blair or some those kinds of things. But, uh, but yeah, I think they're going to be in it. Malvern's going to continue to be in it for a while. Nice. Well, thank you for that update. Um, very good. Any thoughts there, Ben or Bracky? Man, I'm not a national prep guy because Wisconsin's got no prep schools. <laughs> Dude, like if you look at Malvern prep, um, they – right now they have two guys – that are like if the season ended right now and we were setting lineups for who's number one, they would have two guys that would be invited. Ooh, Feldman and who's the other one? Waymeyer. Waymeyer, got it. That's yeah. like I mean that's not a not a whole lot of schools have that kind of firepower. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Next up, where do we want to go? What do we want to talk about? Do you want to talk oh. about? Um, Anything else from yesterday we didn't touch on? I mean, because I felt I feel like we never talked about '92 with with Nate Jackson. We kind of got distracted as we were going up. I realized that after the show when I was doing the minutes, we kind of got distracted when we were doing senior nationals, and I don't think really talked about anything above James Green. <laughs> okay, so we mentioned I well I, I mentioned Imar above Imar. Yeah, yeah Imar, you didn't think he looked like he was in good shape. He, he did not. Um, Fact check. 74. I'm, sure get, I'm sure he'll get in better shape eventually. He just uh, probably is coming off an injury and hasn't been training a ton. And, you know, that's how it goes. Hayden Hydley looked, you know, really, really strong at 74, although I think he was a pretty large favorite going into that. I don't think many of us are surprised. Um, mm -hmm. That he won. Uh, oh, we haven't talked about Mark Hall Trent really at all. What, yeah, that was a good match. We, we could maybe pull some of that match in. I don't know. But it was it was a good match. And, you know, we, we took – I think almost 
universally took Trent in that one just based on well, how he had looked. He'd beaten Foster. Foster had beaten and um, Mark twice. And Foster, twice. Foster Trent was really good, though, too. Yes. Semis. Also, yeah. apparently they did use some formula to determine seeding and didn't look – didn't really factor in results in head to head because right. it should have been Trent the top seed. Pretty sick formula. And Trent the top seed, and then Mark and Foster in the semi. And uh, of course, Mark was the top seed, and then Trent and Foster hit in the semi. So I don't know. It, was, I d it didn't make any sense when I saw it, and then Kozak told me afterwards they did a f some kind of formula. <clears throat> Bunch of chemists. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought Mark is. You know, rounding back into like the Mark Hall form of old, the kind of the predictions I thought, you know, when he first made the move up to 86 permanently, I thought he'd be more this guy. And uh, it was a close match. I mean, I think he had to he had to score late to win. We can maybe pull it he, in he here. He scored with uh, I think 25 seconds left uh, yeah. to win. Yeah, maybe we can out. go to that last like minute or so of the of the match and kind of watch through that, but. What is the what do you think the long term outlook for Mark Hall is based on on this improvement you've seen? I, I still think Mark Hall should go seventy nine. I, I he doesn't look lean at, at eighty six, um, and he never he never struck me as a big one seventy four. So you know, with, with international wrestling, you don't need to make weight nearly as many times as you did for college. You know, maybe five to seven times a year, and that's probably someone who's competing a, a lot. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I just. I don't see it, you know. I'm not around him, so I'm I'm just an outside looking in. That's it. Uh, but that's how I feel about him. And, you know, even against Trent, and Trent's not a gigantic 86 because he wrestles 184. Uh, there's is that the push out? Or you can play that, Tyler. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I just feel he's is, he's kind of undersized at this weight class. Yeah. Um, I, you know, it's, but he's staying up and Zahid Valencia yep. also going to stay up at 86. He's not going to come down and attempt to make the team in 2021. He's going to stay up at 86 and try to take it from David um, one way or another, right? If David doesn't yep. medal, then, you know, that'll be a different scenario. But if he does, mm -hmm. then he, he'll be, just won't be on the team until 2022 at the earliest. Yeah. Um, another one I want to, we need to figure out and get some clarity on is uh is alex daringer what's his plan what's he going to do we can get to see him at the yeah. 86 trials because of his you know just he ran out of time recovering from his injury mm -hmm. but you know how uh does he come down and, and try his hand at 79 a weight where you know he made the finals uh against dake and lost in somewhat he didn't lose in controversial fashion at all he lost outright but it was a weird scenario that led to that thing, the, the extended wrestle off and all that. And they had close matches in the yeah. past down at 74. Yeah. Um, man, I, Deringer's put so much time into getting bigger. Uh, it's hard to see him want to get smaller again. Man, but well, I, I could even see him going up to 92 potentially if David medals. Man. I think he's that big. I mean, if David medals, you got you got to go somewhere. You got. Right. I mean, you can't just say. And that's why, like, I don't understand how Zahid. Maybe Zahid well, goes up to two hundred two. A lot of these say, guys are they're they're not going anywhere. You know, I mean, I don't get it. Why why wouldn't you give yourself an? Uh, why wouldn't you give your, if if you have no opportunity? If David medals, there's no opportunity to make the team at that weight class. Just go go do a wrestle off at ninety two. See how it goes. If you don't want to cut down to seventy nine, go up to ninety two. See how it goes. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree with giving that a shot and seeing seeing where you fit, right? Um, yeah, I mean, we're talking about one of the top competitors. Nate Jackson was uh, a 79 and an 86. Um, and we're talking about he's one of the guys on the short list to make the team there. Why I don't understand why some of these guys wouldn't bump up to... I mean, honestly, if you're saying, let's just go 18 months ago, if you're saying Nate Jackson versus Alex Deringer at, at 86, you're, you're putting Deringer as a gigantic favorite over him. Yeah, not anymore. Not anymore, but I mean, right? Eighteen months ago, you would have for and sure. So, like, for some of these guys to not want to go up to ninety two and take a chance, it is obviously because we all think David's going to medal. I just don't see why you wouldn't give yourself an opportunity. Yeah, and I, another thing, I don't, I, I get not wanting to shrink at all, but at the same time, to your point, you would only have to make the seventy nine once, right? And then if you make the team, then then you'd have to make it again, but. 
it's not like you got to get it down and hold it. You would only have to hold it for a month. So it's really one month you would have to be yeah. somewhat smaller. Would, would doing something like that drastically, if you're trying to be, grow into 86 and you do that for a month, how much does that actually set you back? I'm, I'm being, yeah. uh, I'm not being rhetorical. I don't know the answer, but I'm um, curious. I mean, yeah, I don't think it's that much because, well, I'm, I'm, I guess here's what here's what I'm, and here's why I say well if it is then then two hundred two is your answer, you know if we're talking day day of weigh-ins which which we are, um, someone who's making seventy nine probably is not that far over maybe they're eighty three eighty four kilograms walking around they're, they're able to shrink down to seventy nine, and if you're up at like eighty nine or ninety kilograms and you're shrinking to eighty six, then just go to ninety two you're you're already 90, 89, 90 kilograms right you're, you're that's so that's like Say you're seven pounds over, eight pounds over, something like that, right? You're 196, wrestling 202, whatever, just do it. And if you're smaller, if you're 184, 185, and you, you're kind of small for uh, 86, then shrink down to 79. I mean, again, it's one year. May I, I don't, I don't know why people would people would minimize making a world team. Making a world team is something very few people get the opportunity to do. Winning a world medal is something even fewer people get the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. If you win a world medal, that is something that will follow your name forever. And I realize it's I realize it's not an Olympic medal, which is a little bit bigger, but winning a world medal is still something that is so rare in the sport of wrestling that if you have an opportunity to do it, you go do it. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree. I don't like the uh this one my, one of my issues with the non Olympic weights is like how they're treated by wrestlers as like second class sort of weights to make and participate in and by some that's how they're viewed yeah. and i don't think it's good um and I, I i wish there was that sort of emphasis on on making a team i mean think about jordan oliver he just made his first team ever this guy has been at it and at it and at it since really 2012 like on yes. the cusp, on the cusp. It's a really hard thing to do. It's a major accomplishment. And yes, so hard. He, yes, he's doing it's it. Dake and Taylor forever to get on. Dake and Taylor, it was a big, I remember, yeah. I won't say which coach, but it really annoyed me. He's like, why y'all give so much shine to Dake and Taylor? They haven't even made a team. It's like, he's like, this guy at 57 has made teams. I'm like, okay, yeah, but it's not just about make teams. It's like, do you not understand like how great they are? These guys are amazing, but like yeah. there was that kind of followed them around. They never even made a team. Well, now they, you know, yeah. they made some teams and they did what we all knew they could do if they got their opportunity, if they found their way into the lineup. Um, yeah. So I, I, I and, think but part of part of Dake making a team, part of Dake making a team was that Dake got seventy nine kilograms. Yeah. If that if that weight class doesn't exist. Maybe he has to wait until right. He just you know he just beat Burroughs for seventy four. Maybe he has to wait until that happens to make a team. Um, so he had he had seventy nine kilograms. That was what allowed him to make a team. That was allowed him to be a two time world champion. And we talked about weight class. Weight classes matter. They absolutely do. So yeah, some of these guys. I I don't I don't I agree with you. And I don't see the viewpoint of it's a lesser weight class because it's not an Olympic weight class. No, there's just stupid ass rules that don't allow ten weight classes at the Olympics when there should be 10 weight classes. It's really that simple. I mean, and you look at a guy like Bekulatov, who, you know, he's he's not a, a 65, but it forces these guys to make these yes. probably borderline dangerous cuts, you know, that are, yeah. mm -hmm. it's, but it's your only option, right? Um, yes. I, I say it's your only option. Um, I guess there's the option to go up is all, always exists, but, um, but there's such large gaps. I mean, we talk about like James Green at 74. Is, you know, he's a great example. He's tiny at 74. Right. And he, right. can he barely make 65? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's, man. The, the run. All these extra weight classes. Yeah. I mean, Bracky's pull on James's run at 70 domestically is, is insane, right? And that he should be looked yeah. at differently because it's not an Olympic weight. It's crazy. If you look at the guys that have passed through 70 kilograms, over the years, yeah. there has been a lot of ex exceptional, exceptional wrestlers, including guys that were mainstays and made teams at 65, right? You had Frank did his time at 70. Um, Jordan yep. tried his hand Jordan. at 70. And it was yep. it was James that kind of stood above. So I, I, think it's, um, I think it's great, I mean, that 
a lot of these guys get these opportunities and you should look at it um yeah they shouldn't look at it as like second it's it's crazy that ncaa has 10 weights and there's no weight class where you're like well he won 197 or he won 133 you know I don't, no one looks at it like that but at the world level to make a team is looked at like sort of less than right think about that how yeah. crazy that is yeah like no one would ever look at it winning an ncaa title they're all but basically about the same we debate about which weight is yeah. tougher but there's not like six weight classes in ncaa's where like these are the ones to win and there's the other four are kind of yeah. like oh you're just going this weight because you can't make the you know, make the team yeah. at this weight like it's so crazy to think about and there's exactly 10 international weights and yet the yeah. viewpoint is eh, you know all because the IOC. So dumb, right? So dumb. So very, very dumb. Yeah. Okay. Um. So we're that was a rant there. Uh. But but yes, Mark Hall. And All and if, and Mark Hall would not try to make eighty six if it wasn't an Olympic weight, right? Like he would not try to hold it. Right. I feel like he would probably be like, if if seventy nine kilograms was the Olympic weight, that's the weight Mark Hall would be at, right? There's like no no question about it. Um. So the Olympics make guys go to weight classes that are not their, their best weight. Yes. How much of a 100%. factor for, for Mark Hall specifically is um, the, uh, the Pennsylvania RTC kind of wanting to fill out a, you know, compl- as much of a complete lineup as they can? I know that's one thing I've heard Coach Slay mention is like, Mark's are 86, kind of because McFadden's are 79, Burroughs are 74. Now that's going to obviously change now that Burroughs is going up. Um, but I wonder if at least initially that was part of the, part of the rationale is like, we want to have an RTC where, you know, it's, it's McKenna and then I don't, you know, 70 figure it out, 74 Burroughs, 79 McFadden, 86 Taylor, 97 Hannes. But, um, I, I think that was at least some part of the, Hall, the rationale. Hall at 86? Huh? Hall at 86. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and 97 uh, Hannes. But I wonder if that was at least part of the. Part of the reason that they're they're kind of trying to create some separation there. Maybe that's why. I don't yeah. think that's a great. Um, I, I don't know. To me, that's not I, a reason to an take a guy sport. out of the optimal weight. What? Yeah. Individual sport. It's an individual sport at that level. I mean, there's there's no totally. team concept to that. And then the other thing I think about if I if I was in that situation is like. Um, the weight classes are so far apart. If we just get three weight classes in a row, so if we get seventy, um, seventy four, and seventy nine, the seventy and seventy nine are kind of far apart. Where it's hard for them to be really competitive. Or if you go sixty five, seventy, seventy four, seventy four, and sixty five, if, if they're both equally skilled, that seventy four is a lot bigger, right? The same thing, seventy four, seventy nine, eighty six. Eighty six is so much bigger. It's hard for them to. Um, be super good training partners you almost need like multiple guys right so at say 70 and 74 74 and 79 to be really optimal um you would need multiple guys to really train there yeah um yeah uh i i would i don't know how much that i mean if that's if that's the pennsylvania rtc's prerogative like hey we want i like that i like that they want to have like a full roster and a full team but you know, for think about the individual. Think about Mark Hall. It's like, yeah. wait, I have to be 86 now because David McFadden is our 79, or Jordan Burroughs now in this case. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which yeah. I I get I for on the and yet on the one hand I'm gonna like kind of talk out of the other side of my mouth, but with Jordan coming in, you know, you have to imagine you'd be like, well, okay, I don't want. I'd rather not to have to battle one of my top contenders to make the team in the room every day. So can we not have Mark Hall be at my weight class? That also makes sense to me too. Yeah. But this is a very recent decision. It sounds like the, you know, him yeah. being at 86. So a lot of a lot of different things to consider. I, I know that, I mean, mm-hmm. when Joey McKenna was, was on the Bader show a while back, he was talking about like how that, that uh, Pennsylvania RTC lineup has kind of come together. And there was a lot of, really hands-on recruiting and and kind of lineup shaping and conversations about how do we get this this team to be as good as it can be and i i would i would not be surprised if they're having conversations about how many guys they want you know obviously on world teams but also on national teams and all that kind of stuff and so i i think 
they are one RTC that that thinks about it maybe a little bit more as a team than other places do. And I don't know if that's right or wrong or or the most productive or way to, to for them to think about it or not. But I do think that's at least some some piece of the puzzle. That's that's all that formula has already changed, right? Because their idea was Burroughs was going to be their 74. Now he's said he's going up to 79. So that's already changed, and, and maybe it'll continue to change. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, listen, I'm cool with that idea, but what what comp listen what competitions are you planning on competing in if you want a full team of 10 weights that's kind of sound it sounds great and all but like where are you planning on using this is there a tournament that has all 10 weights i mean even the the uh what was the cup you guys did rtc cup rtc cup thank you it only had six weight classes right yeah. so there's nothing that has 10 weight classes there's no tournament that has you can only enter one pro i mean even the us open scoring system if you want to count that as a team competition it doesn't score one per weight class it scores whoever the hell you have entered so it right. doesn't make sense so i i mean it's it sounds nice it sounds cool to get one person per weight class and you know it, it sounds great to have a team but what tournament are you entering? I don't know. I wish that I actually wish there were team competitions for RTCs. I think that would be outstanding, but it currently doesn't work like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it's often discussed like, man, if we had these 10, these dual meets and this and that, but it's like so few of these programs even have 10 weights. Yeah. Uh, it, it's sort of tough to do. Uh, anyway. <clears throat> That's that's a little non-Olympic weight rant. So we talked about Mark Hall winning 86. Uh, Kyvin falling to Nate Jackson is, on the one hand, you know, it's Kyvin's first time down at 92. So yeah. that's a that's kind of a shakeup there. But I, I would have thought it would be a lot closer match. And I don't know. I actually don't know if, who I would have favored going in, just with all the momentum that Nate Jackson had. But... Seeing him yeah. win, I think six one was the final, and getting those doubles. I mean, it's a it's a really impressive showing for Nate Jackson, no doubt. Nate Jackson seems to have figured out his cardio issues, also. Um, like I, we've seen him wrestle a lot of full matches. Uh, you know, we watched the Sammy Brooks matches where he literally like maybe the weight cutting thing. I don't know, but he literally just fell off the cart. I mean, you know, he was up nine zero in both those matches and got tech falled, um, and now. It doesn't it, with all these matches we've seen him wrestle. I don't think we could name one where we've oh he totally gassed in that one, like um, like the Sammy Brooks ones. Yeah, it's it's interesting because we we've talked a lot about just gas tanks in general, something that comes up in in wrestling and like how correctable is it? Are there some guys that just are going to be people that fatigue? Um, yeah, but this I mean, it's clearly uh, addressable because look at look at Nate Jackson, like he's not falling yeah. off off the off the cart like like he was before just like he'd be doing great and then and it's something you've seen with a lot of different wrestlers um but yeah it seems so i mean i, 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 I wonder if his different. mat mat time is a part of it too like how much he's competing and you just end up in the thing because like with senior level a lot of these guys they are competing like so um infrequently. inconsistently infrequently yeah it's a better word that maybe they're not really getting to test themselves i don't know it could be yeah awesome. I, I mean i would say with cardio there's a whole bunch of like so weight weight cutting obviously hurts cardio for sure no no, no doubt about that um eff efficiency yeah. is a big one you know some guys are inefficient in the way they move and that makes them more tired obviously some guys are more prone to getting tired but if they can learn how to be efficient that really helps them out um and you know confidence and toughness can be a part of it where you know everyone has it and this is where i say like you know i hate it when High school coaches, the first day of practice, that they show every kid how tough it's going to be, and then like a bunch of them quit because they want to show them how tough it was on the first day. Um, you know, it, and when you throw when you throw a frog into a boiling water, it'll jump out. But if you put them in, and you slowly turn up the temperature. They right, they they can they'll get cooked. Um, so you know, again, even even as an older like person, wants to cook our you kids. can you can learn to increase your toughness over time, and. You know, it doesn't have to increase that much at that level. You know, even with 10%, 20% gains, it's going to be huge. If you mix that with not cutting weight, if you mix that with becoming more efficient in your wrestling, um, right, all those things can kind of add up to a, a lot. And I don't know if this is a factor at all, but, you know, he's a he's a assistant coach at, at Princeton. Is he, like, in there wrestling all the time with the college kids? And that's, like, that could be helpful as well. 
just all those reps. Yeah, and- definitely. Yeah, some of the things that happen with, I mean, it, we're talking from an efficiency, stand, efficiency standpoint, some of the things that happen with coaches, and I know this does, I was listening to Keegan talk about Maple kicking his ass uh, yesterday, is like they stop, coaches stop worrying about winning because they're just there to help their athletes, and they just like, they learn more wrestling positions because when they're an athlete, they're focused on solely like one thing, winning as, as much as they could, and then when they kind of learn to wrestle like a little more relaxed because they're trying to get in different positions with the athletes, and then that makes them more efficient too. Yeah. So Maple Maple uh, works, Keegan? Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't have guessed that actually, but I, I listened to Keegan on the Bader show yesterday, and and uh, Keegan said he pretty much kills everybody. <laughs> I So when we were putting cards together, someone said like, Maybe it was Grant Leith or someone, I forget who reached out, but they're like, this guy is killing yeah. everyone right now. Like he's just destroying everyone in the yeah. Missouri room. It's a really, it's a really good room as, as we frequently discuss. And, you know, he had, yeah. I, I don't know if he was there with Jaden at all, but he may have been doing great. Oh, uh, there ain't no way he did nothing with Jaden. Really? I, it's Jaden Cox. Come on, man. Come on. I meant Ironman. I think he's talking about Ironman. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure he kicked Ironman's butt. If he kicked, if he kicked, uh, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, Ben, you well, sure? Well, Bader literally said, Bader literally said that he can wrestle everyone up to heavyweight. Oh, yeah. And if you watched the interview yesterday, he says, yeah, we, yeah, you know, we've heard rumors that he can go almost all the way up to heavyweight. And so that was why I guess I thought maybe you'd heard that also. Bill Brasky. Uh, no, I didn't hear that. Yeah, I meant Jaden Ironman. Uh, not. Not Cox. I would never, I would never make such a suggestion. That would be insane. But that explains your reaction. I was like, man, you really think Jane Arm is? Uh, but yeah. So the the story is about you know how good Kendrick Maple. I mean, Maple is a guy who he was he was up big on Logan Steber in 2017, and mm-hmm. he had he's he sort of just he gassed big time, and yes. um, Logan ended up running away with it. But mm-hmm. Maple, very good, very good guy. Yeah, but I yeah, I know there's a lot of college coaches who, in my opinion, they get way better at wrestling. One of the other, I mean, if you if you spend any time in college rooms, they always talk about how good college coaches are on top, mm-hmm. and it's just like maybe that's a thing you, you didn't spend a lot of time on, and then as you just spend another 10, 12, 15 years around wrestling, you learn all these tricks, and you're not worried about you know just going hard all the time, and all of a sudden you become really really good on top. And so I think that's something you see a lot with college coaches also. Nice. Daniel DeShazer in the chat. Oh, what did he say? He said that uh, Jaden and Maple weren't there together, but Maple's nasty. He's right. Got both it. both from Kansas, I believe. Mm-hmm. Nice. All right, we talk a lot about Kansas on FRL. Yesterday we were talking about Wyatt Hendrickson. Eric Hinckley. Is he from Kansas? <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Is it, oh, is it the new hotbed? It's the New Jersey of the Midwest. What was it? Uh, Preston Waggle was from Kansas. Yes. Waggles yeah. from Kansas. Well, they they had a really good crop in my era. Like uh, Sean Bunch was there and uh, a handful of other guys. Is that Tyler Caldwell too? Tyler Caldwell? Yeah. Yes. All right. I think Caldwell and Maple are from the same high school, I think, right? I don't know that. But All right. We needed to rank the best. research that. We need an article, David. Get on this. Best get, Kansas. I signed this best wrestlers in Kansas. I bet this article. Didn't before. you guys do this? Didn't you guys do this last year where you had uh, all all time lineups from that state? Yeah, JD did this. Oh, did Kansas make the Kansas cut? Kansas might though? not have made the cut. I'm I don't know. Sure Kansas made the cut. That's right. Oh, oh yeah, because we did like California. Was it California yep. versus Pennsylvania? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You could have. Um, I mean, you could have uh, Eric Aiken, 125. You could have Sean Bunch, 133. Kendrick uh, Maple, You got the whole, all, the whole McCormick family somewhere in there. All McCormicks. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, uh, Kendrick Maple, 141. You got Tyler Caldwell. You, you can get a pretty salty squad. Uh, Melvin Douglas, I think, is from Kansas. Really? Yeah. Right, we need. We just need Daniel DeShazer on the show. He's, he's fact-checking us the whole time. Maple... Maple and DeShays are same high school and club, but it doesn't sound like uh, Tyler Caldwell was. Got it. All right, so we got to figure out all the greatest Kansas. Kansas. Now, what? Kansians? Kansans. Kansans. Yeah. Okay. Kansans. You've got some kinfolk in Kansas, that's, right? That's right. Yeah, that's that's where my origins are. I never lived in Kansas, but uh, but my, my older brother was born there, and then I was born in Colorado. But my, my grandparents, everybody's from Kansas. That's what's up. Okay. 
So we talked about Jordan Oliver. We talked about Kumar's potential homicide, <laughs> alleged homicide. <laughs> alleged. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah, we're alleged. We're going to get sued. <laughs> I want to get we're sued. babbling today. That's okay. Um, That's okay. Why don't we go? To, why don't we go to some questions? What do you say? Let's do it. All right. Uh, okay. Oh, U twenty threes. Oh yeah, U twenty three news. It's official. Oh yeah, U twenty threes. Memorial <laughs> Memorial Day weekend, Lincoln, Nebraska. Be there. Sounds like David Bray and I will be there. Let's do oh, it. Oh, that sounds Let's like go. A, raise the rough on my birthday. Everything is happening that weekend. Yes. What else? U twenty threes. NHSCA duels, Pan Ams, and Pan Ams. Oh wow! It's everything. We're so busy. What a All busy live weekend. on flowwrestling.org. Slash golf. Com works as well. Com I wonder, works. I wonder how they're gonna celebrate. Not sure about EDU. Yeah, trust. We should try. It. I wonder how they're gonna celebrate Memorial Day in Guatemala with Bader and uh, and Mike. That will, they. I'm sure they. Have, I'm sure Mike and Bader have their own celebration plans. <laughs> Definitely yeah. doesn't involve wine. Definitely not wine. They definitely won't drink any oh God. Guatemalan wine. Okay. So, yeah, plan your Memorial Day. No cookouts. Just sit. Do you have a cookout on Monday? No. Unless there's wrestling on you Monday. Need to, you need review. Well, isn't it just say duels Why, could, why couldn't you do a cookout and watch wrestling? <laughs> no. Yeah, seriously. You need to be in a dark room in front of a screen. For hours on end, you can do a cookout. Hey, pe wrestling. people in my neighborhood put TVs outside. They they got TVs in their backyard. They they grill out, watch. They should be watching wrestling. They don't know they don't know about wrestling, but they do it with football. Our guy Colby's got a Colby's got TV outside. Sick. Yeah, watch the go. draft from there. It's pretty cool. All right, we'll go to some questions. Who knows where 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 we'll go? And from at FRL is the best. What's a typical week of practice like for AWA when a tournament is coming up? Uh, and when you are you guys are months away from a tournament, so I guess like two different practice yeah. weeks. What are you, they like? You you skipped uh you're skipping Roy Donk's question, which I want I want to get to because that's uh, <laughs> a freestyle rule. Another freestyle rule we need to bitch about. Um, yeah, I I think we we you know the further away we are from the major competition, the main competition we're focusing on, the more new technique we're gonna throw at someone, and then that weeds down as we get closer to the competition. That weeds down, right? You don't want to throw a lot of new technique at someone maybe just kind of little small tweaks as we get close to a competition um i would say the the maximum live is somewhere in the middle of that cycle so in the beginning of the cycle you're obviously working more technique sparring positions um and then in the middle you're doing a little more live and then at the end you're, you're kind of toning down on the live and i i just do that because i think you know if you do too much live more injuries are possible less live less injuries are possible um so yeah, that's that's kind of what it looks like from an intensity and from a technical standpoint. Obviously, if we go different age groups, my my oldest best age group is they're doing more sparring because they you know my younger guys they don't really understand how to be efficient in sparring, so we're not spending too much time there. Got it. All yeah. right, jazz legend Roy Donk, why is a why is a gut wrench from the quad pod two and not four? This is something we have long it's discussed. Four sometimes. Sometimes four. Sometimes you gotta really pop them up there. You gotta get them some serious hang time. But uh, I I don't like that where they go where if you get a takedown and then an exposure like they sometimes they go just exposure points and it's like no you should get credit for the takedown also it should always be a two and a two scenario so so you're getting all the points. Yeah, I I think. When you defend in quad pod, I think you're making a choice. Like, I'm not going down. I'm going to try to fight this and get out the points. I'm staying up. So if you give up exposure from there, I think it, sh I yeah. think it should be four, personally. Because almost by definition, the fact that you have not given up the takedown means yeah, you're not You're grounded. neutral, right. Yeah. Yes. But, yeah, they're saying – it's weird that they're saying you're, like, grounded. It's almost like – it's almost as though they're saying you've been taken down. But you're not taken down because there's no points given. So I don't know if it should be two and two or a four. Um, that's where it gets kind of tricky because it's not really two and two because no elbows hit. The, the third point hasn't hit the, hit the mat. Um, yeah. I don't know, it's kind of a weird one. It's sort of even, yeah. if, even if the war elbow were to hit the mat, then you go two and two, and then it's four points. So you're going to get four points one way or the other, right? For sure, but sometimes they just go straight to the 
they just roll over That's in the gut. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I hate that. I hate it. It's I went to war on this rule. Um, there was a Pico match where it was super. Yeah, it was Junior Worlds. Super controversial. Yeah. And I can't recall what exactly the circumstance was. I think he gave it up. Yes. Or, I think he gave it up. I'm, I'll try to And find they it. gave the. Oh, man, I can't remember what it was. Because it was, they were, it was sort of inconsistent. Sometimes they'll call it four, yeah. sometimes they'll call it two. I think yeah, they just it, say. It, it, when they go straight two there, it's so annoying. Um, but more often than not, that's what they do. I know, and I don't. I don't I'm saying I don't like it. It's not representative of what, of what happened. At least by definition, if they're not grounded, then they're on their feet. And if they if they do become grounded, then you should get the reward for the takedown plus the turn. So yeah, don't like it. Uh, I wanted to make that clear that I don't, I don't like it. You know what? Most of the bitching I do about the freestyle rules are not actually about the referee's application. It's more about UWW's formulation of the rules to make them purposefully vague and hard to call. Copy, copy, copy. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. Um, Bracky's trying to find it. It was oh, a pretty go on. Mm-hmm. It's somewhere. There it was. Go back. So hey, I think. Oh, you are we are bringing it up? Yeah, Hang I think. On. I'm trying to make sure. We'll make sure this is it. So he gets a single leg, limp arms. Yeah, and they just go, I think, just a regular two there. That's crappy because his knee hit. Yeah, send send that to Tyler. What were you saying, Ben? While we I was saying that, that, that we must have been really desperate for questions this today because you have one that says, do you have any recommendations for places to travel to? And I was thinking, wow. <laughs> well, I figured we, we we're desperate today. We're desperate. Well, I kind of like, like the ones stations. that are not like rest, Like I like the one about would you rather be the world like the world strongest or world fast? Even though it that actually was, was a wrestling that was question. Funny. That was a good question. Um, but I figured, well, I don't have good recommendations. I don't travel a lot, but I figured someone like. Ben would be like, oh, you should go to this place because you've kind of... We're starting a travel show, actually. Are you really? No. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> Ufa, kinda, Russia. Ufa, kinda, Russia. That's where juniors I kinda, are. I kind of been asking Are you that going? One. Ooh, I looked at it, man. You can't get there in less than two stops. It's really annoying. All right. Here's the Pico wow. thing, by Maybe. the way. Watch this it. This is in the Junior World semis. He's losing 4-0. Guy hit a sick little cutback on him. Yes, that's right. Nice little high single. He goes so okay. good. So they yeah, go, so go two yeah. and two, but they don't. They, they don't. They just went straight two piece there. Um, and that's where it's stupid because it's right knee, knee hit. That's what I thought yeah. too. Go then back again. Take down two, turn two. It's simple. I was pretty stupid confident rough. his knee hit. Watch his right it's knee. Very close. Ooh. Oh, man. I, should I mean, there, there should be too. some specifics in the rules about rewarding. It, you know the takedown plus the turn or the four point, but that that scenario should be four almost every single time. Yeah, but we so like obviously the, like. Do we like that the quad pods not two? I kind of think it's I, cool. I, I'm, yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool with it. Yeah, yep. cool with I think it's sweet. That's what you <clears> wanted <throat> to find the takedown. I'm good with that. Um, it, it, there's obviously other scenarios like say a front head pinch where you're not getting the takedown, but you are getting the turn points. So you're getting credit for the turn points which you earned. But you didn't earn a takedown, so you don't get points for that. So, right. like, if we're going to get a takedown and a turn, then give us points for a takedown and a turn. Well, they're saying there is no takedown. It's just the turn. Uh, but I'm saying if you're going to turn, they're going to they're going to hit some part of the front of their body first, right? A knee, an elbow. They're going to hit something on the ground, which that mm -hmm. would be a takedown. And then if they do not. If they do not, if nothing hits the ground, then to our point, they're not grounded, and you should get four. Boom. All right, let's 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 see if we can get that change. Let's be the change. Okay. Let's be the change. All right. Ben, Favorite you know place who else is from to? Kansas? We'll say Austin. Eric Ludke. Yep. <laughs> That's all. Yep. Uh, Thoughts? Uh, quick, quick Eric Ludke reactions, Ben. Um, stop. You guys are antagonizing me. <laughs> This is a this is a good question. Um, uh, on a draft party watch thing, someone asked Tom Brady if he would give up two of his Super Bowls if he could go back in time and finish off the undefeated season, and he said yes. Ooh, Ooh he really wanted the undefeated season. So Ben, would you give up your two give up two Hodges for an additional national championship? Oh, so no Hodges, but you won three. No, I would not. I'd give up my Hodges for an Olympic title. Wow. So you yeah. would literally, so you would not trade. 
Thank so you, you, Blake Taki, for that question. You could have still been all right. Let's, let's really play it out. I'm really gonna make you think. If you give me, if you give me a, a national title for each Hodge, I'll consider it because that would mean I'd be a four-time national champion. Okay. Oh, well, here's there's what three, I'll say. There's not three. Is whatever. Okay. Three is whatever. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that sophomore year, or, uh, it would have been a little more than whatever. I imagine you beat Pendleton in the finals, and then you awesome. have the. Ex but but listen. Your senior, your junior, senior year. Let's say you have the exact same season, and you're just as dominant, and you're the most dominant. Just for whatever reason, you don't win the Hodges. Um, hmm. So I feel like with the stats that I had, I had to win the Hodge. So you'd have to change my stats somehow. But yeah, no, I, I feel like my one of my biggest goals was the Hodge because that means you're the best of everyone uh, most years, unless they they decide to give it to two people because they're too scared to make one winner. Um, <laughs> I feel like the Hodge usually is definitively the best college wrestler, um, and that was really important to me. So, no, I would not. What if you didn't have to give him up, but you had to share him with somebody else? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not interested. All right. <laughs> In your deal. All right. I didn't understand this question. Maybe you guys do. Uh, does This is from Kurt Arnoldison. Does C Piles Eight have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset? Oh, <laughs> oh I know that. You got to read the book, Christian. Yeah, it's come good on, stuff. man. Okay. Carol Dweck, she, she's one of the most cited authors in sports psych stuff. She wrote the book Mindset. It's really simple. It's not a super long read. You can get it done in a weekend or so, um, and you will see her cited everywhere if you read sports psych stuff. Okay. What's the Brilliant. answer? I mean, hopefully, uh, hopefully growth somewhere. mindset. I think I think Christian would be somewhere in the middle. He does. Mm. He does have this uh, thing that talent exists, but you know, I think he's got some growth mindset. I think, I think he's got a little bit of both, somewhere on a spectrum. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I don't know what, what talent existing has to do with anything. Um, so okay, cause, so fixed mindset. What fixed mindset says is, I am good at something or not good at something. Um, I am smart. I'm not smart. Growth mindset says you say, you have a fixed mindset. You say you say what? all the time the things you, you like. You know, wherever I am, I am today, I can be different tomorrow or the next day or the next week or the next year, right? I can grow in, in my aptitude of that skill. Uh, well, you, so what do you have? I believe I'm growth mindset. Well, you, you tell me all the time that you're like slow and you're this and you're that. Like sure. It's a so there, there's certain things that I can fix, but that doesn't mean that my skill in a certain endeavor can't be changed. Yeah. Well, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting deep. We're getting deep. We're going super deep. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I, I, man, that's a book. That's like if, um, if a parent asked me what sports psych book I should read, that that's number one that I point them to every single time. That book is, like I said, she's probably the most cited author in sports psych works because of her that book essentially. Her, her nice. Work. I know. Yesterday on the Bader show when Keegan was on, it seemed like really people really liked him talking about the middle side of things and how you helped him with that. Yeah. We had some good ones. I, I had a talk yesterday with a kid, a fourteen-year-old. This Ke Keegan Keegan won't want to admit to this one. This is, but this was a, I know this was pivotal. He was uh, either eleven or twelve years old, and he won the novice uh, Northern Plains in Greco. And then he he kind of played up an injury. Yeah, he may he maybe was injured a little bit, but he played it up. He didn't wrestle in freestyle, and a lot of it was because he, you know, if you don't compete in something, you can say, well, I would have won that. And it's a hundred, you can say that hundred percent because there's no one that can prove you wrong because you're not actually competing. And even if you are the favorite to win and you're say 80, 20, there's still a 20% chance you're going to lose. Right. And that's risky, um, to, to your ego. And so he did, he chose not to compete and I called him on it. And, you know, I think, I think he was 12. Maybe. I called him on it. I said, dude, you're, you're playing it up. You could have wrestled if you wanted to. And he, you know, first he was really mad about it. And then, you know, and then he, he eventually he admitted I was right. Um, and that was just kind of like, listen, we're, we're just going to show up and compete. We're not going to worry about the results. And we're just going to get better. We're going to learn. Every time we compete, we're going to learn something. And we're not going to worry about who we're going to win or lose. We're just going to show up and wrestle. And that's it. And that was kind of, you know, that was a really, I think, really important conversation him and I had a very, very early on, like 12, 12 years old, I think. What was the conversation you had uh, yesterday? Yesterday, you said, didn't you say yesterday with a, with a fourteen year old or something? Oh yeah, it was it was something similar where he he was trying to not not compete at something and he was giving a, a terrible reason as to why not. So here's the problem 
working with me about this stuff is like they don't realize I've already had this conversation 50 times with 50 different kids mm -hmm. and I, I, I already know what's coming and you, so now at this point I'm like listen I've already had this conversation 50 times so I, I know your intuition is to give me like six lies before you give me the truth so let's just waste not waste anyone's time don't lie to me just tell me tell me what you're really feeling and we can talk through it what you know, are they normally really feeling uh so, so well if they if you don't want to do something there there's really two two basic reasons you just don't want to do it right like uh say kyle do you want to go uh surfing you may may not really want to do it right maybe you don't want to surf you generally don't want to or there's some type of anxiety around it uh a shark's gonna eat you you're gonna look stupid there's there's a, a girl there that you like and if you fall off the surfboard she's gonna um you know, she's going to think you're stupid and you don't want to do it, right? There's all these, there's anxiety. So either you really don't want to do it, which in, in our case for wrestling, I really hope that's not the case that the kid doesn't like wrestling. And most of the time, it's not the case. Or there's some type of anxiety, right? I might lose to something. My dad might yell at me. There might be a college coach there, right? There's And most of the time, these kids build stuff up in their head that just doesn't make a lot of sense, you know? And so I, I got to unwind it for them about how it doesn't make sense. And Again, let's just show up and compete. If we win, great. If we don't, let's learn something and get better for the next time. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Why wouldn't why won't you surf, Becky? Uh Sharks one. See? Uh, Me too. I girl two. Sharks. Three sucking at it. The girl was the second one? Yeah. Cause then if I if I'm not good at was a really good surfer, Kelly Slater's just gonna take her from me. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> By comparison. I think Larry Hamilton, he's the he's the best surfer. Is that the one that they did the documentary about? It was awesome. Yes. I forget which that was called. That was a What's his name? Layered Hamilton. Oh, yeah, this guy. Layered? Oh, he's Get a different oh, name, dude. Great. That beast. dude's so cool. Layered Hamilton is a beast. You should bro. you should watch uh what's it on? I think it's and maybe it's on Hulu. I don't it's like a, his name. You'll like him. Layered What is it? On it's Prime. on Prime. Okay. Dude, that Yeah. Yes. Taking that the is wave. An awesome movie. It's really Take, good. Taking every wave is a great movie. Yeah, watch it. You'll you'll like it. Um, mm -hmm. All right. The final. Yes, you will like it. I promise. I, I you, and you'll right. think Laird Hamilton's. Cool. It's just a name for me, you know. He's you know savage. what? You can't pick your name. You know. Yes. He did not name himself Kyle. I know, but Kelly Slater. That's sick. That is a sick name. Kelly Slater is a freaking dope surfing name. <laughs> it's a oh, perfect surfer name. There's no doubt. There's no one's gonna question that. It's going to be hard for me to watch that movie because no surf movie will top Johnny Tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> I, I so, haven't seen that. It's going to be tough. <clears throat> that was a, that was a That's classic the Disney, Disney one, yeah. right? Yeah, Disney Channel movie yeah. back, <laughs> back in the day. Wow. It's pretty cool. It's huge in Kansas. <laughs> um, all right. Um, Next question. Did Bracky and Ben ever visit Haunchyville? We know that they did not. And we, yes, no. they did chicken out. No, I thought Kyle's flight was out of Milwaukee, which if he was going to Milwaukee, it would have been on his haunchy would have been on his it's way. It's not out of being scared. It's not. Flew into and out of Madison. It was just, ben it is was scared. Just Find a new slam. Move on. I'd say Ben am, is scared. You know what? I am scared. I've never been there. I don't want to I don't want to get attacked by some <laughs> Well, I mean, we would of course go in the daytime. No, we're going at night. Say Kyle, because Kyle would know how to fight the haunchies off. <laughs> As a former, as a former one hundred three pounder, yeah, he has shorter, familiarity with the smaller people. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, but Ben is officially a coward because it's not even far from his house, <laughs> and he won't <laughs> face. Not going. Not going. The, here's a spin zone. Bring Ozzy. One, he will fight and dismantle. He, he will Two, fight they him. may think he's a haunchy person. Oh, that's true. He is right? kind of a haunchy person. He just runs around growling all the time. <laughs> yeah, threatening to bite me. I, I love they the, might take him in and he might just become like their best warrior yeah, yeah so I, I can't i can't send him i can't my kid yeah him. you might lose him to the haunches okay um <laughs> uh, do you have any recommend other than haunchyville do you have any recommendations for places to travel <laughs> austin texas oh baby I, mean, I like that's a is a great city um give us give us an an like, what's your favorite national park? You've been to, like, many of them. What's your favorite oh, one? Everyone in the contiguous lower 48. Uh, go, go, Glacier's great. Redwood's great. Sequoia's great. Grand Canyon. Most ones out west. Not not that damn Shenandoah Valley. That one blows. 
the heck is your problem, man? That feels mean. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Take it back right now. <laughs> no, it's the worst national park ever. You go there and you're like, well, this looks like everything else they just drove to. This is crap. <sighs> Play the music, Tyler. <laughs> I, gotta, I, I am so... Listen, you wish you, go, you were from the Shenandoah no, we're gonna Valley. End on that. Christian, you drive to you drive to the redwoods. And you're like, oh my god, I have, I didn't realize trees like that existed. Like I seen a lot of trees, I never seen a damn tree like that. That thing's effing amazing. Oh my god, my my head is exploding right now looking at this tree. You drive to the Shenandoah Valley, you're like, wait, are we at the national park? Because this looks like everything else I just drove through. I don't understand why this is a national park. This is stupid. Why did I come here? <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, that hurt uh, that i just i'm just i'm man enough to admit when i'm hurt and i'm hurt shindo valley know, is a beautiful place you know we don't have giant brag we're not trying to show off our tree height okay <laughs> we have natural beauty i would like to drug test uh, those trees i think they're performance enhanced we're natural it might be you go to the grand canyon christian you're like oh my gosh like I seen it on TV, but this is like, oh my! It's so amazing! It's freaking outstanding! Let's go hike down there. I I have a confession. Shenandoah Valley, nothing. I have a confession. I have no what? desire, and I'm gonna get like my wife is gonna fight me on this. Uh -oh, uh oh, she wants to go so badly again. She's been to the Grand Canyon. I have no desire to go there, dude. You gotta go. I don't think it looks cool at all. No, you've never gone. Well, you've never no. been there. You gotta never. go. Oh, you gotta go. It's so awesome. Do you got to go backpack down in there, spend a few days? Yes. No, see, yes. this already sounds terrible. Do it. I don't want to no, backpack. I've been, I've been there twice. It's like, it's it's amazing. No, yeah. see, I'm not yes. a camp guy. Oh, I don't want to camp. You I stand on the edge of the Grand Canyon and, and like, you, yes. just, you, you get this feeling like the, the, the world is like different than you thought it was before you saw it. Yes. Tell them, Bray. Yep. What? Yeah. Yes. The same feeling. With, it's the same feeling with uh, the Redwoods and Sequoias. Hmm. You feel that yeah. the world is different than what you thought it was? You do. Yes. I mean, literally, Kyle, how many trees have you looked at in your life? Like millions, maybe. At least and then you millions. go there and you're like, look at this freaking tree. It, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. It, it literally does. It makes you think like, holy crap, I'm so small. I'm on this little ball circling around. And I never seen a damn tree like that in my life. Yeah, it gives you a weird feeling. Redwoods excite me. I, I want to see the giant trees. The Grand Canyon. I Dude. Big hands, great. The desert, great. I don't know. Yes, I love you know it. what? I'm sure I will end up going, and then you know, my my mind is open, right? But <laughs> that's my that's my current perspective from not they're, going the, there. These two are setting the bar pretty high for you right now. They're they're saying it's like life. Oh my gosh, I mean, it's awesome. yeah. yeah, it changed yes, it changed awesome. them, it changed them as people. All right, well, the Shenandoah Valley changed me as a person. Uh, hey, you, you know what? I just remember when we backpacked the Grand Canyon, you have to like have a permit to camp down there and all this stuff. Yep. You got to plan way in advance. Mm -hmm. My favorite part was we were down there like camping and this dude, this old guy, he just like rolls up with his Jansport backpack, no permit, no nothing. And I mean, he's, he's probably in his seventies and it's a park, park rangers like, Hey, do you have a permit to, to camp down here? He's like, Nope. They're like, well, you can't, you can't, you can't stay here. He's like, <laughs> what what are you gonna do? What do you want me to do? Walk out? Like they, they, he couldn't just walk out. It was the middle of the night. This guy just laid down on the ground and went to sleep. It was amazing. Uh -huh. He just beast. told me he was natural man and it was his right to sleep wherever. <laughs> yeah, he's or like, he pleased on earth. That is a great I am question. Natural man. Yeah. Why does he have to? <laughs> yeah. What? Are you gonna arrest him? Throw him in Grand Canyon jail? Yeah. He's like, what are you gonna do? Haul me out? Great. How? Go ahead. <laughs> That's a good point, dude. Couldn't they slap a nice fine on him? Probably. He you probably think that you think that guy's paying fines, Christian? Come that on, that dude man. does not have an ID he on him. I guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, uh, well, hey, why don't we why don't we depart? It's been a great great week of shows. It's fun. Jordan Oliver, noon, 11 a.m. Noon Eastern, 11 Central, 9 a.m. in Westland, Oregon. Chill. You can watch Jordan Oliver try to qualify the weight. He's one match away. Live on Flow Wrestling. Hope you guys watch. We'll be watching. We will be stressed. It will be a stressful match. His matches are just stressful, and that's okay. Doesn't have to be easy. One more. Go USA. Go Habit. Go Find Silver. And uh, get it. Thank you. See you next week. Goodbye.